Well, hello there, nonfiction branders. It's me, D.P. Knuton. And if you were paying attention to things last week, you'll realize I did not put out a new episode of the Nonfiction Brand Podcast last week. And there's a reason for that. Oh, by the way, I'm the guy who's been putting this thing out for 199 episodes in 3.82 years. This is the 200th episode. If you had told me that on episode 10, I'd be on episode 200, I would have laughed in your face. But the reality is I've been doing this since sometime in the Paleolithic era, and I've learned a few things. And that's what I want to talk about today. I'm not going to have a guest, and I'm not going to be talking specifically about nonfiction branding. Instead, I'm going to be talking about what a podcast has done for me Not only in building my personal brand, but in enabling me to talk to some fantastic people, to meet them, to get to know them on a very personal level. And what that's done for me, not only in terms of my personal brand, but also me, the person. I'm also going to be talking about some changes I'm going to be making to the podcast, and I'll be talking about that later. But don't worry, we'll get there. First, I'm going to be talking about nine different things I've learned over 199 episodes and 3.82 years. Number one, doing a podcast gives you the very best opportunity to meet and get to know anybody. And I'm not kidding, anybody. Since the very beginning of my podcast, I've been able to reach out to a lot of different people. Some of them are what I would call marketing household names. Other ones are just really interesting people doing really cool stuff in their fields of endeavor. Someone like Roger Wakefield comes to mind, the guy who owns plumbing on YouTube. How did he do it? Search for the episodes I did with Roger and give a listen to that guy because the dude has mastered not only plumbing, for which he is certified, but podcasting and videos and YouTube and you name it. The dude's everywhere all the time. Why? Because he's getting out there and sharing what he knows best, his personal experience in his field of human endeavor which happens to be plumbing. The dude knows toilets. What can I say? Anyway, I got to know him because having a podcast gave me a venue which I could invite him on and learn more about him and what he's doing. At the same time, we get to know each other as human beings. And, you know, in the case of someone like Roger, you go, wow, did not know I could be a friend of someone like you in Texas, but I guess I am now. That's the way it works. Because when you spend, you know, half an hour to an hour talking to someone via podcast, it's almost like you spend a whole night at a bar drinking together. You get to know each other. And for the most part, you learn to like them. And the funny thing is, over the 199 episodes I've done, I look back at my guests and go, did I really not enjoy having anybody on my podcast? Did I not learn something significant from anybody I've had on my podcast? And the answer is... Uh, I can't think of anybody, but I sure can think of all the things I've learned over those 199 episodes. So again, number one, doing a podcast gives you the very best opportunity to meet and get to know anybody. Number two, the reasons not to do will always outweigh the reasons to do. The only solution? Ignore the nots. Just forget about the I should not do. The reality is doing a podcast is a little bit labor intensive, especially if you're someone like me who has to do it himself. Literally every week to record a podcast, I would have to arrange a guest, get them on, schedule the guest, make sure that was all taken care of, do an actual podcast recording session via Zoom or now I'm using Ecamm Live's interview mode. And then you take that raw recording. And if you're like me and you care about what your podcast sounds like, You take out the ums, you take out the ahs, you do a little equalization of their voice, you do a little bit of behind the scenes audio magic, because this will actually go into the next one, which I'll go ahead and say right now. Number three, audio quality is everything. Podcasts rely on good audio. It's been said by others, and I agree 100%, that you'll watch crappy video as long as you can hear it, but you won't listen to bad audio. I mean, think about it. How many times have you started listening to a podcast and just turned it off or switched to something else because, oh, this sounds terrible. It's too windy. There are too many ums and ahs, and this is annoying. I'm going to a different episode. That's what happens if you don't get quality audio. And part of that audio quality is audio editing, taking out the ums. Now, what you don't know is 
that as I edit my podcast, every single episode, if you were to look at that, the waveform in GarageBand, which I use for my recording and editing, you will see every single episode I've ever done has at least conservatively 100 edits in it, meaning I've taken out a whole lot of ums, ahs, you knows, well, all those spacer words, those placeholder words that become so darn annoying. And God forbid my guest was a, that's a good question person. I had one guest, literally one guest who answered every single question with, that's a good question. To which I say, not all questions are good questions. You get to say that once. And I actually know why you're doing it, which is, I am saying that's a good question so I can think about the answer. Frankly, as a podcaster, I'd rather have you think about the answer and then say the answer because guess what? I can always cut out the extra space or I can cut out your that's a good question, which I do mercilessly. Why? Because number three, audio quality is everything. Number four, judge not a craftsman by their tools, but how they use them. Now, what does this mean? All right, so I've had some top-tier podcaster types on my podcast, and we get on, and they've got the Shure SM7 microphone. That is the same microphone Joe Rogan uses. They've got the beautiful background. They've got the lights and you name it and all that stuff, and their audio sounds like crap on my end, and I can't do anything about it. On the other hand, I've had people who were sitting literally in the walk-in closet of their home with nothing more than an ear pods, an Apple ear pods microphone holding it up to their mouth, and they sounded pretty darn good. So which is better, the $400 SM7 Shure microphone or the $25 ear pods microphone? It all depends on how you use it. So I'll be honest with you, the fact that that person went into their walk-in closet to get an absolutely quiet room, by the way, clothes are fantastic sound baffles, they made my life as an editor so much easier because they sounded good. I was able to EQ them, use equalization to make them sound even better. And here's one of my things too about my podcast. My goal is to always make my guests sound fantastic, not only because their content is great, which, you know, I try to get out through questioning and having conversation, but also sound quality. That is my goal. And that's why a lot of people enjoy coming on my podcast. Its reputation speaks for itself because people listen before they decide to come on the podcast. Guess what? They'll listen to a couple of uh, episodes and they listen and go, oh, wow, that sounds great. That guy sounds great. I'm going to sound great. Of course I'm going on. Imagine if my podcast actually didn't sound good. How many people are going to come on a bad sounding podcast? The answer, not many. So anyway, number four, judge not a craftsman by their tools, but how they use them. Number five, regarding subject matter, trust your gut, but lean hard on your actual experience. What does this mean? This is a marketing podcast. It's a branding podcast. It's not uh, dealing with a whole lot of areas that I don't want to deal with. Why? Because I'm trusting my gut. My gut has been saying for years that cryptocurrency is a scary place to be and NFTs are an absolute shiny object waste of time. I would never say those things on my podcast because I don't have personal experience in those things. Now, my gut is telling me as we watch both crypto and NFTs crash as I record this on Saturday, July 25th, 2022, I'm looking pretty damn smart. But I wasn't looking so smart when I first started paying attention to cryptocurrency when it was, I don't know, $5 a Bitcoin. Had I bought it five and even sold at 20,000 right now, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. I'd be drinking an umbrella drink on a beach in the Bahamas. But anyway, I've been trusting my gut the whole darn time. And I've been leaning hard on my actual experience because guess what? No one can take that away from me. And their mileage may vary. But this is my experience, and that's what I'm sharing. Again, number five, regarding subject matter, trust your gut, but lean hard on your actual experience. Number six, finding your voice is only a matter of time and actually using it. That's the big part. You can't find your voice if you aren't using it. Now, if you go back and listen to my earliest episodes, you're going to find that my voice is 
pretty solid because I've been using it for quite a while. But it has, I don't think it's migrated over time, but it's become a little bit more pointed or sharp or I've got my lingo down because I've been talking about nonfiction branding and personal branding for so long. I don't have to take a lot of time to think about it. My voice is there because my voice is my personality. What you hear on this podcast, unfortunately, is exactly what you'd meet and hear if we were to meet in person. My biggest compliment from anyone who's ever listened to a podcast episode is, oh my God, you sound exactly like your podcast. Well, that's fantastic because that is me. And I'm not faking it. I am making it. I am making podcasts that are using my voice. And frankly, that is how I found my voice. So number six, finding your voice is only a matter of time and actually using it. Number seven, if you build it, they will come. No, they won't. Podcast success is directly tied to podcast promotion. And truth be told, I'm better at producing podcasts than I am at promoting my own podcast. All the bandwidth I have available is used to promote the podcast, to get guests, to do the scheduling, to do the editing, to do the posting, to do the back-end promotion of it for the week of every episode. And frankly, I just don't have a lot of time there. And I know a lot of you in the audience are probably saying you should get a VA or someone who specializes in that type of stuff. And the reality is, eh, I'm not going to do that. That's not me, at least not now. And it's not going to be me for the near future for reasons I shall talk about it in a few minutes. But the whole point is doing a podcast and posting it on Libsyn or Podbean or any of the other podcast hosting sites that won't instantly get you notoriety or on the podcast listening list of people who enjoy the podcasts about which you speak. You got to get out there and promote it. Which brings me to 7A. If you write it, they will read it. No, they won't. You need to put even more energy into promoting it than it took to write it. This is a hard-earned thing that I've learned over two books that were self-produced by me. Rotoma, the ROI of Social Media Top of Mind, and my latest book, Nonfiction Brand, Discovering, Crafting, and Communicating the Completely True, Completely You Brand You Already Are. This book came out at the beginning of 2021, and it just so happened to coincide with me taking on a full-time position at Southeastern Guide Dogs in Palmetto, Florida. Now, I have not moved to Florida. Believe me, that would be a very difficult thing for me to do because my people are made for ice flows not for Florida summer heat. But from my home in Madison, Wisconsin, I've been able to work as their creative director and a full-time copywriter ever since January of 2021. Again, my book came out January 1st. I started there January 4th. That kind of messed with my mojo when it came to promotion. And frankly, that's the way it had to be because the majority of my focus had to shift to something else rather than in promoting the book. I wish I had done a better job promoting it, but then every once in a while, I'll get a little feedback that's telling me that I'm doing okay. And let me read to you something that I just saw on an Amazon quote from a person named Boundless Beauty. I, I think that just might be a pseudonym. Anyway, Boundless Beauty says, Nonfiction brand does an outstanding job of presenting readers the tools necessary to discover and harness the beauty of being one of one. This book is infused with personality, Every brick you need to become the solid foundation necessary to establish and scale your brand and real life examples from diverse businesses, owners, and backgrounds showing you this can be done by anyone. This book is a must read for anyone wanting to connect to who they are authentically and to become a brand that will live on. Thank you. You do not know what this means to me, Boundless Beauty. Getting that kind of feedback is like food for the soul. Thank you so much for that. And by the way, what am I doing, podcast listeners? I am doing 7A. If you write it, they will read it. No, you need to put even more energy into promoting it than it took to write it. So please check out the nonfiction brand, discover, craft, and communicate the completely true, completely you brand you already are, available right now wherever you are on Amazon.com, Amazon.au.co, or whatever it happens to be in your neck of the woods. Check it out. Search for nonfiction brand and throw in my name, Knuton, K-N-U-D-T-E-N. That'll get you there. All right, now we're getting close to the end of this episode, but these are two of the things coming up 
that I wanted to talk about in this episode specifically. Number eight, rise and grind is for coffee, not a balanced life. What does this mean? Well, it just means that I've been doing this for, say it with me, 199 episodes and 3.82 years. And frankly, I'm getting a little bored and a little tired. So I need to do some things to change it up. And one of the big things I need to do is take a little time, which leads me to number nine. If eight is rise and grind is for coffee, not a balanced life, nine is for every field needs to fallow, including mine. As a longtime creative director and copywriter, I always considered my downtime not as wasted time, but as very much like a farmer's field that is allowed to go fallow for a period of time so it can be more creative and productive at a later period of time. So that's what I'm going to be doing. For the next month, I'm going to not put out episodes. If this is episode 200, episode 201 is going to come out later, probably after the summer of 2022, with a new format that is based on one guest over potentially a longer period of time. Right now, podcast episodes have been running about 20 to 30 minutes. I anticipate the new ones are going to be more like 35 to 50 minutes, depending on how the conversation goes, because I want to bring more quality people to you. And now that I'm using a new matching tool called Podmatch, you can check it out at podmatch.com. Full disclosure, I'm not paying for it and they aren't paying me, but I'm using it like crazy and I'm finding it tremendously helpful in identifying podcast guests. Because I'm no longer having to beat the bushes to find guests, I can have more of them on. So consequently, instead of having one guest over two consecutive weekly episodes, I'm going to focus every conversation on one guest and during one week. So starting at episode 201, expect to see a format change, mostly in terms of duration, guest appearances, and stuff like that. The topics aren't going to change because they've always been based on who I'm talking to. But it's all going to be revolving around what I call nonfiction branding, telling the truth about who you are, or as I like to plaster this bumper sticker around, know who you are so you can be it. If you don't know who you are, that's job one. And then job two is demonstrating who you are effectively every day via every channel in a what I would call a nonfiction way. Be your nonfiction self. So again, number eight and number nine, rise and grind is for coffee, but not a balanced life. And nine, every field needs to follow, including mine. Consider it a sabbatical and check back in a couple of months. I want to thank you so much for listening to the Nonfiction Brand Podcast. It means the world to me, and I really, truly appreciate it. By all means, check out my book, Nonfiction Brand, on Amazon, wherever you happen to be. Just search for Nonfiction Brand and Knuton, K-N-U-D, as in David, T as in Tom, E as in Edward, N as in nothing, and you'll see the book pop right up. If you pick it up, please drop me a line at dp at dpknewton.com and let me know what you think because I'd really love to know. Oh, and of course, both the podcast and the book would love an honest review from you. So if you would like to share an honest review, please do because that helps other people find not only the book on Amazon, but the podcast wherever fine podcasts are free. Well, that's it for me. I'm taking some time off and I hope to see you on the other side of this sabbatical. Until then, I'm your host, D.P. Knuton, and this is the Nonfiction Brand Podcast. I'll be talking at you again sometime after August 2022. Bye-bye.